So in today's video, I'm going to explain a really satisfying and relaxing way to paint watercolor agate and geode slices in Procreate. Not only is this a great painting exercise, the results are also totally sellable and look great as stock graphics or as individual framed prints. This time the watercolor effect is coming from the background paper texture and I'm doing all the painting using the regular watercolor brushes. The first thing that I'm going to do is use the Aurora Quill Brush from the regular watercolor brushes and then using a key color here for this agate slice and a pretty large brush size, I'm going to paint a ring shape like this. And after that, I'm going to change the color a few different times and add some kind of concentric rings of varying width on both sides of this kind of first line we drew. Now, when you paint with the Aurora Quill Brush, it'll sometimes shift the color one way or another. So I intended a bluish tone, but it turned out a little bit purple. So to fix that, I'm just gonna go to the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'm just gonna slightly shift the hue back towards the bluish tone that I uh, originally intended. Next, I'm gonna add some more kind of concentric rings here, but I'm gonna do it in an opposite color as what the key color is here. So. This is kind of a bluish tone, so I think I'll use something kind of reddish or yellowish. And it's definitely a stylistic choice to do this, but I like the kind of contrasting colors. And I'm going to use the uh, same Aurora Quill to do this. And I also think it's a good idea to add this clashing secondary color to the outside edge of the agate as well. Next, I'm going to change the color back to our first color, this sort of bluish tone and I'm gonna use a very dark version of it to just kind of dot along the border of the agate here. Not along the entire border, just kind of uh, stopping and starting here and there. And it's at this point that I think it's a good time to do some blending. So for that, I'm gonna to change to the water blender brush here at the bottom of the brush kit. And I personally like to pull in some of these darker areas along the edges. I think it adds a nice kind of wet on wet watercolor look. And also, I think it's good to blend a couple of these bands together just to make it a little bit smoother. And once the main structure of the agate is finished, we can move on and start adding some patterns and textures to this. And the first one I want to add is this kind of banding effect, these concentric lines, I guess. And I like to do those on their own layer above the uh, agate slice. And I think I'll do them in pure white. For the brush, I'm going to use the fine liner pen and maybe around 10 or 20%. I'm just going to add a single line, just like the uh, bands that I painted on earlier. And I want to do three concentric lines and you could definitely paint that, but there's a kind of a time saving trick I like to do. So I'll just duplicate that band. Then I can use the arrow tool and right, I've just got a duplicate of it like that. Then I can just use the warp option over here. And I can actually just cheat and stretch it to make a concentric band that's basically the same as the original one. And I'm gonna do this so I create uh, three different bands. And the three bands are on these three different layers and they're all the same opacity, but I think it's a cool effect if I just progressively lighten them. So they go from light to a full opacity, just like that. Then once that's done, I can just pinch them together so they're on one layer just to keep it more organized and maybe I'll lower the opacity for that to whole layer just a little bit. And it's normal for the agate to look pretty flat at this point. And there's a trick I'll show you uh, in a little bit and how to bring out the transparency of this. But there's uh, before that though, there's one more pattern I wanna show you how to make. And this is one I usually see in the center of the agate. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna put it behind the agate slice. I'll choose a grayish blue tone, something to match the uh, agate already. I'm gonna use the soft Neptune quill brush. There we go. Then I'm gonna to change to pure white, smaller size. And I'm gonna do a couple of these kind of half circle shapes. Then I'm simply just gonna use the water blender and I'm gonna soften the inside uh, boundary here of each of these little half circles. And the idea here is it just transitions almost like a soap bubble from a very white tone to a slightly darker tone and it gives it this kind of spherical illusion. 
Next, I'm gonna adjust the uh, curves here to make this uh, look a little bit more transparent and maybe glossy. So for that, I'm gonna make sure the agate layer here is selected. Then I can use the uh, freehand selection tool and I'm gonna create what I call a donut shaped selection. So for example, I'll circle around the agate like this, but I'm not gonna reconnect it. I'm just gonna jog over and then circle back and then reconnect it. Then when I feather it out, it sort of joins it into one donut shaped selection. Then I can go to my adjustments, curves, and just raise this bottom node. And that will brighten and soften the colors and make this whole thing look a little more glassy. And I'll do it one more time here on the uh, inner ring. Another thing you can do is make the center of the agate more vibrant and saturated. But first we need to merge all the agate layers onto one. Then I'll just select the center, feather it out and raise the saturation like this. And there we go, this uh, agate illustration here is all done. And here's a look at the final result. I would say the key things about agate slices are the contrasts. So usually the outer edge of the agate is gonna be very rough and desaturated, whereas the inside is very smooth and vibrant. Another contrast I like to see in these is a, uh, a key color and then some examples of the opposite of that color. So in this agate, we've got the blue rings and then we have a couple of these yellowish orange colored rings. And definitely depending on the size that the final illustration will be printed at, you can add more detail. This one that we did in this video is pretty simple, but you could do a larger agate just by adding more detail and more concentric rings of color. And there we go, that pretty much wraps it up. As always, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.